Hello, today we shall be uh, talking about slash reviewing, whatever you would like to call it, The Flash Season 7, Episode 2, called Speed of Thought. This is uh, technically almost the tale, this would have been the penultimate episode of Season 6, but because of COVID and all that, it didn't happen. So anyway, we're getting it in Season 7. But anyway, without further ado, shall we begin? So we're going to be up. I'm down here. That's better. But anyway, like I was saying, we're going to be talking about uh, Season 7, Episode 2, Speed of Thought. This was a really good episode. I really did enjoy it. The uh, first half of this will be spoiler-free, then the second half will be spoilers. I will put out a spoiler warning once the spoilers arrive. But anyway, this episode starts off with um, pretty much a Wells Memorial, because in the last episode, spoiler alert for the last episode, but if you haven't seen it while you're watching this video but pretty much we found out that wells uh pretty much every version of the wells died so that barry could uh have the speed from the artificial speed force because it needed a uh like i believe it was a hue like a actual physical conductor human conductor because of the particles in his body i actually have it written now what it's called but i can't remember but anyway pretty much uh we have flashbacks of all the different versions of wells that we had we had nash obviously nash he was the main one of the last season Harry, HR, uh, one of the other, one of the OG Wells, pretty much all the Wells that we come to know over the years and all that, and, uh, too bad, uh, Gandalf, uh, uh, Wells the Grey didn't make an appearance, that would have been funny, but I know that they wanted to keep it a serious tone, but anyway, there, we find out that there's actually a room full of artifacts within, like, their memorial area, and we saw, like, different objects from everybody that they lost along the way, so I thought that was pretty cool. And then, uh, at the end of it, Joe's like, do not bury yourself, uh, do not, <laughs> do not blame yourself. This was not your fault. Do not do it, because I know what you're doing. Don't. Which I thought that was good. It was nice to see Joe doing some more stuff, too, since I believe it was, uh, season five he hurt his back. Like, the actor, Jesse L. Martin, and, uh, he always just had to, uh, like, sit like this whenever there was a scene with him he was always just sitting and he was like okay so like it was just cool to see him back at it again and i heard that he's gonna have a like a centric episode to himself this uh this season as well so that should be cool and pretty much like uh barry is pretty much saying like he's like my heart is my greatest weakness the, my villains always always use it against me and honestly and, uh, pay attention to that line because it comes back to play within this episode big, very, very largely. And uh, we find out that Iris actually sent a message through the Mirrorverse uh, because she's starting to actually gain power within the Mirrorverse because she's still stuck in the Mirrorverse. Obviously, I think they would have gotten her out by now if it was like uh, like we were actually in Season 7 like we were supposed to be in and if COVID didn't happen. But pretty much, like, she is gaining more power in there while Eva's out in the real world. And, um, that's all I'm gonna say for spoiler, for non-spoiler. So, I will give it about five seconds before I get into the spoilers. Alrighty then, let's get into spoilers. If you're still here and you don't want to hear spoilers, what are you doing? But, anyway... We saw that Barry was actually able to foresee what Cisco was going to write on multiple occasions. And this pretty much told us that Barry is starting to get speed thinking. And it actually started giving me vibes of, like, DeVoe and all that. But not right away. Like, more to come on that. But at first, like, when he just started, like, off and off and off and off. And he was thinking about everything. You knew, like, stuff was going on. And then they, he's like, I know how to get into the Mirrorverse. And then, like, uh, Cisco's just like, you freaky. You freak. So I thought that was funny. Just having Cisco do, like, Cisco things, that's always just fun into it. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Carlos? I think that's the actor's name. He, he just does a great job playing Cisco. And we find out that Eva's actually keeping her secret from the last episode from, uh, I believe this is a black hole or, or like, or organization that she's working for or something. I can't completely remember, but it was like, she was like, do I look off to you? And she's like, like the, uh, the black hole agent. It is a black hole. She was like, yeah, you look like Carver. Well, like how he looked when he was keeping secrets from us. 
that we found out about it. So, like, things are going to be happening with her because she doesn't want them to know that she's actually, like, an artificial... She's not the real one. She's actually just a duplicate. She's a mirror duplicate. And, uh, like I was saying earlier, speed thinking all that, and, um, one part where, uh, Cisco was showing, like, his new invention that he made, he was like, ladies and gentlemen, like, w the way that he said it specifically, specifically reminded me of, uh, Heath Ledger's Joker from The Dark Knight, like, that one scene where he comes in, he's like, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are tonight's entertainment, only have one question, where is Harvey Dent? So that, like, that just gave me so many vibes of it. Like, he obviously didn't say all that. He pretty much just said, ladies and gentlemen. But then just the way that he, he delivered the line gave me Joker vibes. I, I think that might have just been a little Easter egg, like, thrown in. But I really did enjoy it. So they pretty much did. They found a way into the, uh, the uh, Mirrorverse. And uh, Iris is getting full-on control of the Mirrorverse because she's been in there for so long. And, uh, we find, like, we go to a scene where Eva's actually taken, bla taken back all of her weapons and all that from Black Hole. And then there's a big action scene and we get a return for, uh, from Killer Frost, which she is, like, in her, uh, usual getup and all that. And then pretty much the big thing is that they can film her from the front now because Danielle Panabaker, the actress that plays her, is no longer pregnant. So that's, like, a really big thing with that because at the end of the last season, they always have to film her at angles like this, like, so you can't really see the baby bump or pretty much be like, hello. Like, just to, like, block it sometimes. She would have a pillow there and she's, like, or she's on the other side of the couch. Like, that's just pretty much what it was. So then we have a, uh, cool little Eva versus Killer Frost battle kind of remind me of, like, a little bit of the Spectre and anti, uh, the uh, anti-monitor battle when they were, like, this to each other, and then pretty much, uh, also had some Dragon Ball vibes as well. And then pretty much Barry got all the, uh, tachyon particles from Eva when he was running around her, because he is super, super fast now. She doesn't even know how fast he is. And, uh, pretty much Barry let Caitlyn slash Killer Frost actually get hit with Eva's gun. And that was actually a big surprise because he could have stopped it and he just watched it and he was like... So, like, it was like something was off about it. You knew, like, okay, that's something, that something Barry wouldn't do. Barry, actually, he wouldn't really do that. And then as we, uh, as the episode continues, we realize that Barry's actually losing all his emotions. He's just like, that was the fastest way. We must save the targets. Friends, targets, they are one and the same. So, like, all that happened, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, he's really losing it. And, um, Cecile's pretty much helping Allegra with, uh, Nash's passing and all that, because uh, Cecile usually always has, like, a subplot within the episode. It's not as big as a story, but it's nice to see what Cecile's doing all that. And, um... One of the lines that I really liked that Cecile said, I had to read it again, was, uh... She said, people we love are only gone when we choose to stop carrying them with us. Which I really did like that line. I thought, like, it had, like, a lot of meaning behind it. I, like, really, really liked it. Like, that one... But anyway, uh, Barry ends up finding out Eva's secret, that she's actually, um, a mirror duplicate and all of that. And then we find out that Eva is on live TV talking to this, uh, television host, which, uh, the television host was something else completely. But pretty much what it was, was, um, she was talking there about how she's going to be taking over the company from Joseph and all that, and how Joseph was just a psycho. And then, you know, like, the video of that came on, and then she was the head of the news reporter was like, Who is that? Who are you? Are you the real Eva? No, you're not. Who, what, what are you doing here? Did you kill the real Eva? Me and the world wants to know. Like, I was just like, whoa, whoa. Calm down. But, like, it was good. It was good. I was just like, whoa. Like, the minute she just escalated from, uh, like, one to a hundred. And I, like, but it was it was good. I liked it. I just thought it was, it was just kind of funny. And uh, we find out that Barry's mind is actually getting much, much faster. And, uh, like I said earlier, like, Barry was, like, friends, targets, one and the same. 
And then uh, Barry pretty much tells him, he's like, we have to choose to, who to save. Camilla, Iris, or Singh. Now we can save Singh and Camilla together, or we can choose Iris. We won't have time to save all of them, or enough energy. Choose one. And then they put it up to a vote, and then uh, Cisco chose for... Uh, Sing and Camilla, because Camilla's his girlfriend, while Barry was like, Iris. So it was like a, like, it was, tensions were high in that scene, and then after that, the camera was like, whew, and then we found out that it was actually Barry just running a hypothesis, pretty much, in his head, and he was like, you know what, no, I'm gonna do this on my own, because I've already seen how this turns out, and that is a no-go from me. And then behind everybody's back, I, uh, Barry is like, I am choosing to save Iris. And then Cisco is like, what is wrong with you? He's like, I've re I looked at the uh, schematics. He's like, they are literally, like, the, uh, the artificial speed force is literally taking everything, like, all emotion from your head. It's literally shrinking it to the size of uh, a pea. Like, you do not have any emotions anymore. And he's like, listen, I know that you said that. Your heart is your be biggest weakness, but trust me, it is not. It is not your biggest weakness. And then Barry is like, I'm not choosing Camilla and Singh because they're not my wife. I'm not choosing Iris because she's my wife. She knows how to defeat Eva. She knows the most about Eva. I, I could care less. So you're like, whoa. Like, Barry saying that was something that he would actually never, ever ever do, so that was actually a big shock, I was like, Ooh, okay, yeah. there is uh, something, something, something definitely wrong with him, and then uh, Barry pretty much just said to Cisco, he's like, the hard truth is that Camilla and Singh are expendable, and then uh, pretty much that scene happened, so uh, Cisco and Killer Frost and uh, Camilla, uh, Allegra, sorry, <laughs> uh, appear and they uh, fight Flash and pretty much Flash takes all of them out besides Killer Frost and uh, Killer Frost injects herself with I believe it was Velocity 10. So anyway, there's a really, really super cool fight. It was really, really well done. I loved how they were just racing through the city. The like, I never like the special effects never bothered me from the first season or to this season. I think they've always done the best that they could and I've really enjoyed them. But I gotta say, like. The special effects on this fight were so, so, so well done. It was such a, such a cool fight scene. And to see Killer Frost uh, get speed powers and just go running across, like, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Barry. It was just so, so cool. And then they're running and all that. And then, uh, pretty much Dar Barry still defeats her and all that. And then, uh, Barry gets into the Mirrorverse. And then Iris is like, oh, okay, can uh, we just take the uh, Singh and Camilla first because they need our help. They're not doing too well because they were starting to feel the true effects of the uh, Mirrorverse. And they were just like, Ugh. and uh, Barry is like, no, not them, only you. And uh, she's like, what? No. And he's like, no, not them, only you. And then I was like, oh, and then he's like. I will just turn this up so it literally pulls you over to me. You are fighting it. Do not do that. It is dangerous. You will get hurt if you keep fighting it, Iris. Just obey. And that was pretty much what well, that was his emotion in this episode. And seeing Grant do all that in that episode and then all this in this episode just proves like how good of an actor he really is. And pretty much he forces Iris out of the mirrorverse. Like it literally drags her out. And then uh, Iris is like, what is wrong with you? You're not my... And then she just has a bad reaction. She literally falls on the ground. And Barry is just like, okay. Like, he barely even reacted to it. He didn't even say okay. He just stared down at her. And then uh, Barry's like... Like, he snaps out of it. He's like, Iris, Iris. And then he looks around. He's like, what What? What did I do? What? 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 What, what did I... What did I do? What, what, what? And like it was just—it was so well done. I really, really enjoyed that scene. How he snapped out of it, and a lot of people were uh, saying that this kind of reminded them of uh, like Thinker Devoe and all that from uh, season four. I want to say it was four. Devoe was the main villain, so it was just—it uh, was really, really cool to see that and like uh, finally see Barry snap out of it. 
And then there was a flashback to season one of the scene on the bridge where Thawne actually killed Wells and took his face and all that. And then we went over to present day after I uh, reverse flash ditched the body. And then we saw all the particles form. Now the particles were green. That I think that might have because uh that might have been some pariah energy from the like the crossover it became pariah. But we're not really sure what it is yet because they haven't elaborated on it. But pretty much we see, major spoiler right here, we see that the original Wells that we originally first got introduct uh, like, introduced to is back. Now, I have a couple of theories on how he's back, but like I really like I really don't know, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they do it. But my biggest theory is I wonder, because all the other Wells died, if he's the original Wells, would he come back and just live his life normally? Or does this have something to do with like the parade? energy because when all the other wells died this was the last remaining one guess we're just gonna have to wait and find out but overall i say this was a really really solid episode flash season seven is off to a great start i really enjoyed the first two episodes i would give this episode a nine out of ten it was really really well done it was really cool to see emotionless barry i thought that was so well done i really enjoyed it and that was my review of flash season seven episode two speed of thought so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a subscribe so I know to keep making more of these. Let me know what you thought of the episode down in the comments below. Let me know what episode you've enjoyed better so far, episode 1 or episode 2. Thanks for watching as always again, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye! Yeah.